on time. Uh, we will be giving a, a, a couple of updates for documents uh, in the upcoming slides. Uh, those documents we didn't give update for, uh, or they had missing progress report in the first uh, meeting that we had. And this time uh, uh, we have the reports. Uh, uh, LOA has promised to give the updates. Uh, it's a bit, uh, there's a bit of uh, uh, irony in there in the report, so I want him to talk about it. Uh, LOA, are you still tuned in? You are muted, maybe. No, no. Okay, I can yeah. hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. So, uh, on uh, slide since I have. I think the quality has degraded. Uh, okay. The voice quality has degraded back again. Uh, okay. Uh, no, your voice is chopped up com uh, completely. Uh, do you think? Uh, Let me do the update then um, uh, myself. Uh, uh, Loa is having some internet issues recently. Okay. Uh, Nick, can can we mute uh, everyone except maybe uh, Loa and myself? Okay. Um, okay, so we have this uh, document here, MPLS LSP ping registries. Uh, it's an update to this uh, registries. Uh, uh, the shepherd's message is that three things are uh, remain outstanding before working group last call. Uh, things are on purpose uh, written this way. So he has to fing, uh, fix his Swinglish. Uh, uh, that's Swedish English. Uh, and, and I think he's hinting to some typos as well. Um, uh, the current editor is not, uh, yeah, he's admitting basically that uh, he's not fit for the job. Uh, so that's Loa, I think, I think at least. Uh, so there are some uh, should implications uh, to resolve um, and um, uh, the, 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 there are there is some text in the in the document, um, and it should be clarified uh, if there is additional text needed around the should um, implications. Uh, the the draft as is uh, proposes uh, mixing the experimental and private spaces. Uh, uh, I think the private is to be kept. Oh, sorry, the the experimental is to be kept, and the private will be merged in the experimental. Uh, but uh, but I think the, the, there is no conclusion or convergence. So the working group chairs are working on a proposal uh, for a consensus, and uh, this this will be driven by the chairs uh, over an email. Uh, that's my understanding, at least. That's correct. Okay, great, Loa. Thanks. The second uh, document update we have is the LSP ping uh, code points uh, for OSPF v v2 and v3. There was a discussion uh, on the code points. Uh, uh, Tarek, yeah. uh, we can shortcut this quite a bit. We can say that the authors and the working group chairs have, have agreed with uh, Deborah what to do. Perfect. Uh, I, I think I got clearly the first part of the message. Uh, the working group chairs will work with the area director, uh, Deborah, uh, on a message on this. Uh, 
that's what I wanted to uh, uh, reiterate. Yeah, and we, we we reached an agreement. We reached an agreement. Okay. Yeah, I I understand that uh, there was an agreement that was reached. Do you want to talk about it, the agreement, or? Uh, no, my voice quality is too bad, so I don't want to do that. I can send a mail. All right. Okay. Okay, uh, we uh, we have uh, two 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 documents to report on uh, as well. The SPL terminology uh, it received uh, it was in working group last call. Received some comments. We expect a new revision to be published uh, that address the comments that were received, and uh, we expect the working group last call to be closed uh, next, or actually it might be closed already. Uh, that's my understanding from Nick. And the shepherd uh, uh, will uh, prepare a write up uh, next uh, in preparation for the publication to proceed. Uh, uh, the last document, yeah. Tarek, actually, the uh, next version has already been published. So, okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, the last document, uh, it is in working group adoption, Paul, at the moment. Uh, we encourage the working group to take a look at it and, uh, and sound your opinion uh, for the poll. And uh, with this, I think the updates I have uh, are done. Uh, and unless somebody has any other question on the queue, uh, anybody's uh, in the line, uh, let me check. I don't see anyone in the queue. The queue is empty. Thank you. Uh, I'll go ahead and share the first presenter uh, on our agenda is uh, Wei Xiang Cheng. Hello. Okay, let me Hello. present the slides and I'll uh, hand it over to you. Okay, so. Uh... In fact, uh, we have uh, uh, presented uh, the. So, could you see my screen? Oh, um, I will be presenting uh, unless you have a oh. new version of the document. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Do you see the the slides up? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I can see it. So. Uh, yeah, I think it, uh, these uh, slides have been presented uh, in the last uh, uh, interim meeting, and uh, I think this page gives the uh, uh, main changes are made uh, uh, as the comments uh, resolution. So we have made the uh, four uh, changes uh, based on all the comments we received uh, before the meeting. Uh, so I think it, uh, uh, I, I, I don't need to uh, represent uh, the slides, right? So maybe uh, the four changes, the first one, we change the special purpose labor to the extended uh, special purpose labor. And the second, uh, we change- You want me to flip slides to the changes? Or do you have the changes in the slides? Uh, no, we did not change the slides. This this was changes uh, uh, the, on our drafts. Our draft. So okay. I, I just want to give a summary of uh, what changes because uh, I think the presentation have been done uh, uh, two weeks ago. So I I just uh, uh, give some summary on that. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, the second change is that uh, the definition of the flu ID labors uh, TC and the TTL, we change it to make them uh, compliant with the RFC uh, 30, 32. And the third change is we add some text on the comparisons with uh, MPS uh, in situ OEM. 
And uh, the last one is that we add some text on the security consideration. That's all. So, any question? Uh, I have one question. You actually asking for an extended label, aren't you? Uh, so you're, you're meaning the extended the uh, special purpose label? Yeah. Uh, so uh, currently, uh, I think Nick, uh, uh, could you uh, do? The, I think the, the, the yeah, yeah, this page. So uh, you can see uh, we are using the extension labor uh, instead of uh, uh, previous uh, the uh, special purpose labor because it's uh, easier to. Uh, compliant with uh, the current uh, uh, FC, I, I think. I think we have uh, somebody. Uh, Greg has a question in the queue. Yes, it's I. Hi, uh, this is Greg Mirsky. Um, yeah, I uh, appreciate the changes, and uh, I think that it's an uh, uh, interesting uh, document that uh, clearly defines uh, one way of um, using alternate marking method uh, in MPLS environment. Uh, I might have a suggestion uh, to consider. So I understand that. Um, so the deployment of uh, support of this functionality and extended special purpose label with a full ID um, might not be as a green field. So uh, probably uh, can, can consider uh, IGP extensions advertising this uh, capability. Yes, thank you. I think, uh, uh, yeah, I agree with you. So if we can, uh, if it's necessary, we can uh, have some attention to such as uh, IGP or BGP RS, so that we can use that to uh, advertise the, uh, such as the flu ID ESP uh, support uh, uh, ability. Uh, but I think for the Application scenario currently, uh, we can use uh, uh, the configuration. Uh, I mean, maybe we can use the uh, network management system to configure the node uh, on the capability so that it knows uh, uh, if it can support the uh, flu labor, uh, uh, flu ID labor. Okay. Uh, so that maybe works uh, this moment. If in the future, as you mentioned, uh, uh, we can extend uh, uh, some uh, uh, control plan uh, protocol, such as IGP or BGP RS, something. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, moving on to the next slide, unless you're not done, uh, Wei Cheng. You're done? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, uh, so we have Shraddha next uh, on the uh, agenda. Shraddha, I can share the slides or you, if you want, you can share your own version. I don't mind. You can share the slides. Uh... Okay, that's fine, that's fine. You need to reclaim uh, host ownership so that you can display. Do you see the slides now? I'll go in full presentation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this is an update on uh, uh, 
inter uh, domain oam for sr network so we had presented last in in uh, singapore uh, so uh, uh, in this meeting we'll be presenting updates uh, since the last revision uh, so this uh, the name of the draft has been changed to reflect to mpls working group so before it was a spring working uh, group document so the uh, version is changed to 00 after the name change next slide and also uh, with this we are covering um, uh, so so the draft was named inter as and we changed the name to inter domain because the same solution is applicable when uh, uh you know multiple i uh, the network network consists of multiple igps and uh, the end to end path is built using either label stacking or um, mechanisms such as bgplu so uh, in the name we did two changes one is we uh, uh, moved from uh, spring to mpls working group and changed the inter as to inter domain um next Yeah, so this uh, this shows the um, uh, network consisting of multiple IGP domains, and then end-to-end -end, uh, connectivity is using uh, BGPLU. So in this domain, let's assume that the routes are not leaked across uh, the domains. So if PE1 wants to send an MPLS uh, ping or trace route via BGPLU um, uh, to PE5, then PE5 may not have the uh, return path to PE1. And if in, even in case of trace route, uh, on the BGPLU, the packet will visit um, uh, the intermediate BGP nodes like ABR1 and ABR3. And those may not have, uh, uh, for example, ABR3 may not have return path to PE1 to send the echo reply. So the solution that is explained in this draft uh, applies to this kind of scenarios as well. So for MP in, in case of uh, MPLS uh, ping, uh, so we'll use the BGP LU FEC to PE5, and then we'll from the uh, PE1, we can build the reverse path segment list, which consists of the reverse path, which is uh, 1030 and 1010. We can see here, the end-to-end, -end, uh, each of the domains are SR enabled and uh, the, uh, yeah, the node set of uh, the intermediate nodes like ABR1 and ABR3 have been included in the reverse path. So when the packet reaches PE5, um, the echo reply will use this reverse path segment list to send the echo reply back uh, as an MPLS uh, packet. Any questions here? There's one question in the queue from Rakesh. And Greg is next then. Actually, the question was for the previous presentation, so not yeah, for Sorry for that. <laughs> then it's Greg. <clears throat> uh, yes, thank you. Um, uh, a little bit wonder is like, um, maybe it's later in the presentation, but so you said that uh, the routes are not leaked and usually it's done on purpose uh, for the security uh, considerations and concerns. So uh, do you see any um, that this tool opens a attack vector and uh, something that can be uh, misused or used to expose um, the topology of the network that not to be to be exposed. Yeah, so this use case is specific to a single operator um, who is owning all the domains uh, and want to run an end-to-end -end MPLS ping and trace route. So security perspective, um, so we can so the ping is in this particular example the ping or the next slide we can see the trace route it's not uh, visiting the internal nodes in the domain if it if it is not allowed to so that will be decided by whether the border routers will propagate the ttl or not so if they are configured to not 
to propagate the TTL, then the the ping and trace route will be uh, on the border nodes uh, only, and not they won't visit the nodes internal to the domain. Okay, thank you. Right, please. So this is an example of how the trace route works. Uh, so the MPLS trace route the packet initial packet will contain um, the GPLU fact to PE5. Uh, it reaches uh, ABR1, the first uh, uh, request packet, uh, and then when it sends an echo reply packet, it will. In, so here it is dynamically building the return path as the MPLS ping and MPLS trace route progresses. So PE, um, the uh, reverse path segment list, it will include its own uh, um, node set. ABR1 will include its own node set. The next echo request will, uh, will use that uh, reverse path segment list uh, and include it in the echo request. So when the next uh, packet reaches ABR3, then the echo reply will, because the incoming echo request has a reverse path uh, segment list, it will send the echo reply uh, with um, uh, using an uh, MPLS um, uh, 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 as an MPLS packet with 1010 as the top label. And in addition, it will include its own nodes on the top in the reverse path segment list. If you see, uh, the um, ABR3 is sending um, the reverse path segment list uh, uh, with 1030, its own node set on the top. And then th that's how the trace route continues. So the next trace uh, echo request from the uh, PE1 will have the reverse path segment list uh, consisting of 1030 and 1010. And that's how when packet reaches PE5, it will say I am the egress and it will send its uh, echo reply packet. Um, as an MPLS packet with these two labels, um, so which which will have the connectivity to get the packet back to PE1. So updates from previous version, we added this particular use case that it is applicable to inter-domain multiple IGP topology as well. And uh, in the last meeting, we had some uh, clarification questions uh, regarding the reverse path segment list, uh, especially why uh, we should we need the IPv4 and the SID option. So we have added clarification uh, in the document. And there were also some questions with respect to IPv4 and IPv6 um, SIDs being used together. And then we have added clarification that if we have a network, which is, you know, like core is pure IPv4 and then uh, metros are pure IPv6 networks. In this such cases, we will not be able to run uh, MPLS ping and trace route uh, end to end. Uh, that is out of scope of this document. So if the IPv4 network is also is is uh, um, upgraded to be dual stack with IPv6 address, then we can run end to end IPv6 uh, MPLS ping address. Uh, next yeah, request the working group for review and comments. Uh, and it's been stable uh, for some time. Um, uh, so uh, we, we authors would like to request a working group to adopt. Uh, okay, thank you, Shraddha. And uh, uh, as we, um, we've we done last time, we will uh, uh, poll uh, interest in this document, the progress forward on the email list. Uh, there will be usually a, a review team assigned to review the document. And based on the review, uh, it will be shared on the email list. We will uh, decide to progress. Uh, There's one question from Greg. Yes, thank you. Uh, actually, the, the question was um, uh, to the slide where you presented uh, trace route. 
what is the um, value of reply with uh, for the echo request? Sorry, I can you repeat the question, please? Um, so, the sender there of the echo request uh, can choose uh, how uh, the uh, echo reply will be sent back. So, what's the value uh, that needs to be uh, used here for this to work? Because, uh, as you said, it cannot go over IP network. So uh, I, I think you're you're asking why uh, the there is a uh, reverse path segment list in the no, no, equal no. reply. Is that the question? No. Uh, okay. Uh, LSP ping has a, a field reply with, and uh, it has uh, several uh, values defined for this field to direct echo re reply back. So it could be sent over IP, it's default. It could be sent over control channel. Um, so which value uh, yeah, so is to be this, used here? So, uh, so this is a case where um, there is no uh, I, uh, re um, return path, um, no IP return path, right? Because mm -hmm. PE1's loopback is not leaked across each of the domains. So the the presence of reverse path segment list is being used as an indication to send the echo reply over MPLS uh, instead of IP because there is an MPLS connectivity end to end. Uh, okay, um, let's take it to the list. But I I think that there should be some uh, value that indicates that uh, the reverse path list has to be used uh, to send echo re uh, reply back. Unless we can use some uh, value. The, the presence of uh, this itself is an indication, but yeah, we can discuss. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you, Shraddha. And uh, back to the agenda. Uh, we have uh, Yang Fan coming up. Yeah. Uh, could you please show the the presentation for me? Thank yes, you. I, I will. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, put this in slideshow. Okay, it's good. Thank you. Um, okay, this draft outlines the the problems uh, problem statement when the signal degrade needs to be detected and indicated in the uh, segment routing of over MPR's network. Uh, so the yeah okay so what what is the definition of signal failure or signal degradation? Uh, signal failure is uh, is regarded as uh, as uh, uh, absence of the network resources. Uh, it is because of the the physical or function and availability of port or link or the equipment. And meanwhile, the signal degradation uh, is a kind of uh, is a quant um, quantifiable decrease of the signal quality. And it results from the, the fiber impairment or the uh, WDM transmission error. Um, so signal degradation can be can be described like a transition phase. Uh, the equipment or the link is not totally shut down, but the quality is de deteriorated. Uh, deteriorated. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. Uh, so let's see what it was in in history and what we should do in future. Uh, so first is the definition of the signal uh, failure and the signal degradation in, uh, defined in RFC 4428, and uh, this in RFC uh, 6378, um, it specified the protection switching protocol associated with signal failure. And RFC 7271 uh, introduced five capabilities of the linear um, protection used for uh, used in MPR's TP network. And one of the capabilities is the support of the protection against to against to signal degradation. And we also found there are uh, two other uh, internet drafts from uh, from other authors uh, shares the similar idea. Describes the the signal degradation. 
degradation detection uh, at the at the LSP or software level, and also specify this um, the protection mechanism. Uh, it is a fact. Uh, the fact is that the signal degradation is not mentioned in any uh, draft of these in any draft of uh, SRMPS, OAM, or BFD uh, mechanisms. So we believe it is valuable to investigate the necessity of the support, the necessity of supporting signal degrade, degrade the signal degrade uh, detection and the triggering the relative protection mechanism mechanisms in SR uh, MPLs networks. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, there is a list of problems that when we illustrate how signal degradation uh, performs in SR MPLs network. And uh, the, the first problem is the, there are list, there are there are a variety of files. So the the level of the signal degradation on different types of ports can vary significantly. That could bring more difficulties, uh, more difficulties uh, to detect or measure the signal, de uh, signal degradation. And the second is th there are disadvantages for performance management approaches to detect the signal degradation, like the, mm, the active PM is not always online and the passive PM consume too much uh, network resources. So, so far it, they are not feasible and efficient. And the third one is the we found that fault management does not seem to be good enough for the for the detection. Uh, for example, the BFD in and the the signal degradation is not detectable uh, in BS, in the BFD case because mm, the signal degradation uh, may cause the quality deteriorate. Um, uh, make okay um, because the signal degrade degradation uh, doesn't mean there will there will be a packet loss so there uh, so it's not so detectable for BFD to detect the signal uh, degradate and also because there is uh, uh, several there is at least almost uh, 10 milliseconds later than the than than the time uh, when signal degraded happens. And there's no some no uh, way for MPLs ping or trace route to detect the the, the sig uh, signal degradation, and but uh, we think that the lower layer um, the lower layer fault management like the OAM uh, alarms um, might be an option to to detect the the signal degradation. But there are, there's also issues because they 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 use different parameters in different layers, and. Uh, and we think compared to the MPLs TP, um, the LSR routers in, in, in SR MPLs network uh, is smarter, and it it should play um, and should play more roles uh, than the um, it should play more roles to detect and transmit the signal to trigger the protection mechanism. And there's also the the last one. There's also other alternatives like the control plane signaling or the NMS or SDN controller. Uh, we want to keep this discussion open to understand how people want to make use of them. Yeah. Okay. Next slide. Next slide, please. Okay. Um, we think the, the the last five problems above is not. Uh, it's not enough. So next step is to collect uh, comments or suggestions on this topic. Um, helps to identify the value of signal degradation detection in, uh, in segment routing or SR MPRs network. And we want to explore more interest and use cases. And if this requirement is acceptable by the working group, uh, we would like to propose the solution alternatives. Okay, thank you. Um, we have questions. I, I have a question. Uh, this is Tarek. Yeah. Nobody else behind me. Uh... Yeah, Greg has also a question. Okay, Greg, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, it's uh, very interesting, and as you said, um, I think that we have some history discussing this. 
Um, and uh, if my recollection is correct, uh, the reason why it was not uh, followed on and uh, nothing exists is that there was seen um, the benefit of following uh, layered architecture networking and matching it with the layered OEM approach. So if uh, in the physical layer you have a um, signal degradation detected, then uh, this layer uh, has to take um, any uh, protection uh, or recovery actions. Uh, propagating this information to the upper layers of the network doesn't seem to have and bring any significant benefits. Uh, if the lower level cannot detect uh, signal degradation and um, you try to detect it on upper layers, then um, the proper tools um, can be used, as you mentioned, uh, the performance monitoring. So uh, it's up to the network operators and uh, those who design the architecture of the network uh, to analyze the layers and see where are the appropriate OEM and how appropriate OEM mechanisms are to be used. Uh, in addition, what I can point is that uh, in the BFD working group, we have the discussion what might be um, become as BFD to zero. Um, sometimes we have a different um, name for it. But um, we have been discussing the uh, extended BFD draft, and extended BFD draft has uh, new capabilities added to BFD uh, fault management. So effectively uh, making it a Swiss knife of OAM and giving BFD uh, uh, performance monitoring uh, capabilities. But again, it's not necessarily BFD, but fault management protocol would edit um, performance monitoring capabilities. Thank you. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you about the uh, uh, the different layers. Actually, they have uh, the different layers should take care of the the, the issues inside uh, within this layer. Um, but we see there are there are different. Um, I mean, different kinds of uh, of lower layer uh, design or lower layer uh, network. Uh, sometimes that the 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 lower layer doesn't take care of the of the issues of the signal degradation at at this at, at its its own layer. So we um, we we see there is a there we we see that this signal degradation doesn't affect the doesn't affect or doesn't trigger the the protection to to solve this uh, solve this problem but it it brings uh, issues to the upper layer like to the to the application or to the to the um, uh, to the services so we we think that um, it should be um it 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 is uh, the, the different layer the, the the relation between different layer is not strictly um um uh, isolated and also there there are also i i if i remember correctly there are also other uh, working group and they defined the 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 some unified uh, oem mechanism uh, to to uh, go across the different layers mm -hmm. so we we want to bring this topic and we we want to know that um yeah, at, 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 uh, the first that we want to express that there is a requirement to 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 ask for the, um, the, the uh, ask for the behavior ask for the the um, the things that should be done um, in in this case. And the second, we want to know um, how people um, think this problem should be um, should be. Um, how, how they how they think this problem should be solved um yeah we, we actually we, we we would like to discuss that um the the general picture that how to how we uh, how we should uh, deal with the problem like this okay uh, uh next question is uh, i think at what i was next uh this is Tarek and uh the first part of my question, I think uh, Greg asked, uh, put it put it exactly in 
a good way in a layered uh, network, you would want to handle uh, events uh, detected within the layer uh, faults, for example, and not unusual. Mean, this is usually, but do you have maybe you have a case for propagating faults uh, up in the in the layer stack. Um, uh, that's fine. Uh, we can take that discussion uh, and forward. Uh, but my second uh, comment is the last bullet on your next step claims that, uh, you know, this is specific to SR and PLS. And my understanding is SR and PLS. Uh, SR is, is just a signaling control plane signaling mechanism. Uh, so whatever scheme you're uh, or whatever uh, benefits you're seeing with with, uh, with this approach might uh, carry over to other signaling mechanisms. Uh, unless you didn't, I, I didn't see what highlight SR brought, uh, or is it the uh, MPLS aspect? Um, yeah, I understand your question. Um, actually, we, uh, we, uh, we actually have shown that there is a history that they, they have a similar design and, um, in the MPLS TP network. Um, uh, we think that um, actually it's not so specified to, uh, actually this, this issue, this problem is not specified, uh, it's not uh, only special for SR MPLS, it's actually it, is should, it should be taken uh, in the in the general MPRS um, uh, data plane, um, but we but we think that it's no it's not so uh, valuable to to work on a whole a uh, whole general um, solution for all the uh, for all, all, for the for the for all the different types of the MPRS different um, different different types of the MPRS uh, data plane. And I think the SR SR is the is is the popular is the SR is the popular MPLS data plane uh, they use uh, rent, uh, rent, uh, nowadays. So we think that is um, yeah, it is it is an option that uh, um, it is a good question. Actually, we we want to we want to we don't want to bring a a whole general. Um, a solution for all these MPS uh, for for all type of the MPS data plane. So we want to first focus first focus on the SR MPS. Okay, thank you. Do we have other questions in the queue? I think we do. We have Jeff. Hi, this is Jeff Haas. I, I'm going to make a sort of side observation here. Uh, part of the discussion point is that you're looking for enough degradation that you can consider the event a hard trigger to take some action like protection. Degradation itself, if it's reported in sort of a sliding scale, you know, rather than a binary thing or if a, you know, a floating point type thing is useful for telemetry purposes, even if it's not quite ready to be used as a, a trigger. So a common example is you're having degradation of a, a link due to laser problems. And that may show up as an example at the forwarding error correction layer as increased numbers of you know, uh, thick errors. Reporting these things up the stack is helpful because it lets you see in your network that you might have an outage impending. Um, so I think your challenge will be you know, at what point do you start using degradation as a hard trigger to take an action? And can you also? Uh, take the reporting mechanism and use it as a telemetry layer so that uh, you can take proactive actions when you see that failure might be impending. That's my comment. Yeah. Mm, yeah okay, thank you. Um, I, I think we should. Yeah, I think ahead. we should um, bring more, <laughs> bring more, bring more discussion, maybe in the mailing list um, on this topic and how we should. Uh, uh, how we can um, so how we can proceed this uh, this uh, this draft? Great. I think that uh, that you, yeah. So you 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 uh, you did uh, um, uh, attract that attention uh, from multiple uh, members. So let's follow up as you said on the email list and uh, uh, 
we'll take it from there. Next on back on our agenda, and uh, thank you so much, uh, Yan. Uh, next we have uh, Yimin, and I will uh, switch uh, to Yimin. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, I I can. And uh, let me know if uh, I'm ready. Yeah, the slides, and you're ready. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I like to uh, present this uh, new draft on behalf of the co-authors. Uh, the draft is called uh, P2MP transport uh, using chain replication in second routing. So it's a spring draft, but it has uh, aspect of uh, SRMPS. So we'd like to uh, present it uh, in MPS working group as well. Uh, next, please. Uh, so P2MP transport has been a, a, a challenge in SIGM routing, uh, mainly because uh, SIGM routing is built on a model of uh, stateless core and uh, single point provisioning at uh, ingress routers. So to do uh, P2MP uh, transport today, we have to use uh, ingress replication, where uh, in order to reach X number of leave nodes, we have uh, need to use uh, uh, X number of uh, P2P tunnels. Uh, there's no traffic optimization in this. Uh, an alternative approach would be to use uh, a control, you know, controller-driven PTMP trees. Uh, this approach can achieve maximum traffic optimization, but uh, it requires uh, the controller to dynamically provision or manage so-called replication segments on or branch nodes. These um, replication segments are essentially uh, per you know P2MB tree state on um, transit routers. So your core network will not be uh, stateless anymore. It will become stateful. And also this approach requir requires uh, some you know, uh, communication channels between your uh, controller and uh, transit routers, which may not be you know, always be possible uh, in some networks. So the question is, um, uh, is there a middle ground where we can uh, maintain the fundamental model of second routing while still being able to achieve some level of uh, traffic optimization for you know, P2MP transport. So this, this draft uh, proposed a solution based on chain replication. The idea is to uh, use a set of uh, uh, P2MP chain tunnels or P2MP chains with each P2MP chain uh, reaching uh, multiple leave nodes. So overall, the network resources will be saved and the efficiency, you know, transport efficient, efficiency will be improved. Next slide, please. Uh, yeah, so again, a P2M chain is a tunnel that uh, reaches multiple leave nodes along the path. The, the, the root node, the ingress node will still uh, replicate packets, but uh, will do so over a small set of uh, P2MB chains. The mechanism is generic. It's applicable to all topologies. Uh, it will benefit the most for uh, certain topologies, including ring topology and uh, linear topology. So in the first picture, um, it's a uh, ring topology. So given the uh, multicast stream to three leave nodes, all we need is one P2MB chain. And it gives us the, the maximum uh, efficiency. The, the second uh, picture um, is kind of a linear topology. So in order to reach the four leave nodes on the, on the right, uh, we need uh, you know, only we're using only you know, two P2M chains instead of four P2P tunnels across the domain. So the number of uh, tunnels across the domains uh, is uh, significantly reduced. Next slide, please. So here we, we look at uh, a P2M chain in detail. Uh, we have a picture here. So um, 
each P2MB chain has a tail end leave node, which is a L2 in this picture. It's just a, a regular uh, receiver. And there are one or more um, transit leave nodes. Uh, uh, this is the L1 in this picture. So each transit leave node acts as a bot node, meaning uh, it will uh, both forward packets as a transit router and also a locally processed packet as a re receiver. So uh, if you look at L1, so for each incoming packet P, uh, we'll make a copy of the packet to generate P1. And on one hand, we forward the uh, packet P along the chain. And then at the same time, we process uh, P1 locally. So in this draft, we model this special kind of uh, processing on a transit leave uh, node as uh, a new type of segment called the bot segment. And the SID of a bot segment is called a bot SID. So, um, and then uh, a P2M chain basically becomes a, you know, a list of SIDs with uh, bot SIDs of the transit leave nodes in their uh, corresponding positions. In, in the city list. Next slide, please. So here is an example of a uh, multicast stream uh, to four leave nodes, L1 to L4. So it's using two chains, red and green. The red chain uh, goes to L1 and L2. It's taking the shortest path. So as we can see, the city list um, it's basically B1, which is the bot SID of L1, and N2, which is not the SID of uh, L2. So we will talk later that, uh, you know, bot segments are, very, are, are routable segments uh, in a very similar manner as node SID, node segment. The green chain uh, goes to L3 and L4. Uh, it's taking some, you know, explicit T path. Uh, and then the uh, SID list uh, basically consists of, uh, you know, a sequence of uh, adjacency SID followed by B3, which is the bot SID of L3. And then, you know, a sequence of adjacency SID to the, uh, to the tail end L4. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, we'll skip this one next, please. Uh, this is an example of a ring topology with uh, two multicast streams, uh, green and red, each over its own P2MB chain. Uh, the node F is a receiver, it's a leaf node um, of both streams. Therefore, uh, its bot set appears uh, in the segment list of both uh, red ring a uh, red chain and a uh, green chain. So this basically shows that uh, you know, bot segments are common segments uh, that are completely shareable by uh, all multicast streams and the P2MP uh, chains. Next slide, please. Uh, so bot segments are nodal segments. They're, they're only need to be two, you know, uh, bus segments per node, one for SRMPS and the other one for SRV6. There are global segments, their bus sets are allocated from SRGB. There are routable segments uh, via the shortest path, very similar to node sets. Uh, as we have seen, they can also be used to uh, build, uh, you know, ex uh, explicit path. Uh, they are common segments shared by, uh, shareable by all multicast streams or PDM chains. Uh, they have, uh, you know, they can serve other purposes as well, such as uh, traffic mirroring or traffic mon monitoring. Next slide, please. This shows the uh, generic, you know, general forwarding flow of a bot segment. So uh, the incoming packet is P and the active set of the packet happens to be the bot set of the current node. 
So the, what we do is that we replicate P to make a copy P1, okay? So for P, we like to uh, forward downstream. So we perform uh, next on the bot set and we forward P uh, based on the next set on the packet. For the rep, uh, the, the, the copy P1, we like to you know, process it locally. So we perform a sequence of the next on all the P2MP chain sets on the, on the packet. And then we you know, uh, process the uh, P1 locally. Next slide, please. So if we map, map that flow to SRMPS, um, you know, sets become uh, uh, labels. So incoming packet is P, and top label happens to be the bot set label of the current node. Uh, we replicate P to create P1, right? Uh, on the left-hand side for P, we pop the bus seed label and we forward P based on a lookup of the next label. For the copy P1, we need to pop, you know, all the labels of the P2MP chain and then process P1 locally. So here, when we, um, in some cases, the packet may have a service label. So we need to be very careful when we pop the P2MP chain labels. Um, we need to know where, you know, if there's a service label uh, in the, on the packet. So in that case, uh, here we're using a special, you know, extended special purpose label called the uh, uh, end of chain label. We insert that label between the service label and the uh, PTMU chain labels. So when we do the label popping, we're gonna pop the chain labels and the EOC label. And then we'll leave the service label with the packet for local processing. Uh, if the packet doesn't have a service label, then we just you know, pop the entire label stack. Next slide, please. Uh, I'll skip this part. Yeah, next. Uh, this is the flow of SRV6. So uh, I'll skip next. Yeah, actually, we're running a great uh, Yemen uh, in the schedule, and there's a couple of guys still slot, slot, uh, slotted yeah, for. Almost, almost done, I think. Yeah. Okay. Let me quickly just 10 seconds for each one. W which slide do you want me to switch to? Uh, number 14. Yeah, uh, provisioning uh, node uh, bus segments can be provisioned statically to each leave node, and it can also be dynamically provisioned and advertised by some protocols. Next one. Okay. That's my last. Uh, so we like to ask uh, you know uh, reviewers to provide the comments from both uh, Spring and the uh, MPS working groups, and uh, uh, because this draft uh, you know introduce a new special purpose label. Uh, we like to, you know, uh, apply, you know, for a early allocation. Okay, thank you, uh, Yimin. Um, um, we will uh, we will take this uh, um, uh, to the list and uh, discuss, uh, you know, uh, if if a special purpose label uh, or this proposal. Uh, it requires that, and you know, are you asking for a early uh, allocation of a special? Yeah, yeah, because we are starting some, you know. Uh, Tarek, Tarek. Yeah. Yes, I can hear you, uh, you, this is still a individual draft. Yes, it actually, yeah. it actually requires a working group draft to request uh, uh, early allocation. A good point. Yeah, so it has to undergo uh, multiple reviews and, and get adopted, I guess, uh, by a working group before we proceed. There's also one question from Greg. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you. Um, uh, it's very interesting. Uh, so what I would uh, be interested is in uh, probably discussion on the list and in the document is how this bot said 
compare us to the tree seed, which is uh, proposed in uh, SR point to multi point policy document. The tree seed, uh, in, in short, tree seed is a per uh, uh, PTMB tree. This is a completely common. This is completely shared by the multiple streams. You know. Yeah, because uh, again, uh, on my uh, first this is look, a, a new way to do things to optimize uh, traffic. You know, um, I, yeah. I see it. It's just a different way, and I think that there will be a good discussion just to have one method of doing uh, uh, multi uh, multi point uh, segment routing. Uh, Greg and Neiman, let's uh, go to the email list. Uh, let's take uh, to the list, yeah. Absolutely. I don't, yeah, I, it's uh, two different approaches. They have different applicabilities, yeah. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Yimin. Uh, next, we have uh, Kamran. Uh, Kamran, uh, you wanted to share your own version of the slides, right? I can't hear you. You, you okay? Yes. Yes, I can. Yes. I'm going to share my own version, yeah. All right, I'll stop sharing and go ahead. Can you see what I'm sharing? Yeah. Yes, I can. Go ahead. Okay. All right. So I'll I'll be quick. I'm we are out of time. Uh, anyways, so this is really a quick update on the Yang data model uh, for MLDP, uh, the draft version six, uh, which needs to be respent. Uh, I'm presenting on behalf of my co-authors. So let me go to the next slide. So uh, just a quick uh, recap and reminder for our current status for MLDP Yang draft. Uh, this draft has gone through Yang doctor, doctor's early review. Uh, we had addressed all the comments from AC, uh, who did a very good job with the, with the detailed review uh, in revision five. Uh, the document went through working group last call and IPR poll uh, in, in last fall. And we had received some working group last call, last Call comments uh, from some of the working group uh, people like Tom and others, uh, and those comments are mostly uh, you know similar comments that we receive on LDP Yang as well. Uh, so at that time we were handling LDP Yang to push through. Uh, so we we kept focusing on uh, making sure that LDP Yang uh, moves forward uh, through working group and ISG. So LDP MLDP Yang augments LDP, so it has a strong dependence on LDP Yang. So last few months, uh, our focus, the team, is actually the team, uh, mostly uh, it's the same team that working on both LDP and MLDP Yang. Uh, so our focus has been to push LDP Yang to ISG uh, for RFC publication, address all the comments uh, that we receive from Yang doctors, uh, area doctors, routing director and uh, gen art uh, review comments. There was, there was a significant comment and we wanted to get that through because they, then they will set a good base for MLDP. And our plan was, and it still is, to address and progress MLDP uh, right after LDP has uh, basically, LDP has become stable at ISG level. So that is the current status of MLDP Yang. Given that it has a strong dependency on LDP Yang, so next slide or two, I'm going to just quickly talk about LDP Yang and then finish with the MLDP Yang and next steps. So LDP Yang status, uh, thanks to uh, uh, and push. Uh, from uh, working group chairs and Dr. Shepherd, Tariq, thank you, area director, Deborah, and ISG reviewers. Uh, the draft is now a proposed standard. Uh, it is right now in RFC editor queue. Uh, however, I think it's gonna stay there for a little bit because of misreference. We have a dependency on uh, routing working group policy model. Uh, and I was told that this model uh, basically is, uh, is about to get to working group last call. Uh, after they have addressed the Yang doctor's review. So I expect LDP Yang, uh, you know, uh, to stay in this, uh, this state for, for a little bit, but uh, we don't plan to make any change. Uh, it's, it's already ready for publication. So what did we, you know, uh, what did we do with LDP Yang in the last couple of months that most of it also applies to MLDP Yang that we have to do? There are, there are some, I'm only capturing the major comments here. There are minor comments as well. The major things that we have to change in LDP was to define our own identity, uh, uh, our own identity for LDP protocol. So we picked MLDP, and but we have, we constrained this to a single instance. From day one, our scope, uh, as I highlighted in our document, was for a single instance LDP or MLDP. Uh, there were quite a bit of discussion and uh, debate over why LDP IPv6 is not in a base uh, model. 
because we have two models in our Yang, base and extended. So there was an explanation uh, that, that we have given in the document itself, as well as on the email exchange that YLDP V6 was uh, non, not considered as an ACE feature. So same thing will apply for MLDP. And there are examples which we did. There were uh, comments about security sections and that's about to really pinpoint actual vulnerable and sensitive items uh, from, from Yang and management perspective. So that section was enhanced uh, significantly uh, during ISG. Uh, there were a few other comments which were made on LDP draft, but they are really beyond LDP's uh, you know, jurisdiction. It was more like a routing label uh, comments. For example, why we are using MD5, can we not use crypto algorithm? Why MD5 key has to be string and this and that? Why we cannot do this filtering policy and routing policies? So, so we were just uh, complying to what ITF uh, routing working group uh, base charts have specified and we were just augmenting them. But we still address some of those comments to the best of our uh, you know, uh, compromise and capability. So we, we extended our password authentication to have any crypto algo, uh, including MD5. Uh, we started using filtering policies using the routing working group policy model uh, so that we are uh, really, you know, uh, stand, uh, you know, using standard uh, definitions. Uh, there are discussion about containers presence versus enable and all this, and then uh, then uh, and basically a request to simplify the document to a single tree here compliant to NMDA, and there were lots of NIST and fix. So that was a lot of comment on LDP Yang, and uh, in the last few months uh, we made sure that we address all of those uh, or reply and, and close uh, close with the ISG So. So out of those, uh, the list of these comments, uh, most of these things equally apply to MLDP. Like LDP, MLDP V6 is a non-base. Uh, it augments LDP, so it's also augment that, uh, you know, uh, MLDP, uh, LDP identity. Security section MLDP draft has to be beefed up same way that LDP draft we have to do. Uh, the policies in MLDP have to you know, also use the routing policies and, you know, other, other alignment with the LDP draft. So having said, uh, having you know, state all this. So for MLDP, our next step is really to align our uh, MLDP model with the LDP model changes that we have already done. Uh, as, we sp as we speak, we are already working on this. Uh, we wanted to have a draft uh, posted uh, before this session. We could not meet that deadline, but within a week, we, uh, we are planning and hoping to submit a draft that will address most of the comments, uh, similar comments that LDP had. So, and then we hope that this will make MLDP Yang uh, progress uh, smoother than LDP Yang because lots of comments we have already addressed upfront before it goes to ISG. So our plan is to basically now uh, apply the exact same thing on MLDP Yang and submit uh, within a week. Now, one question, uh, personally, I'm a bit confused. After having done that, MLDP has already went to work in the last call. So after making those changes, which will be a bit significant, do we think that we need to reissue our work call again on this uh, updated revision of the LDP? That will be there in a week or so. Uh, the question for chairs and working group uh, we are asking. But from our side, uh, we are okay uh, either way. I think that's my last slide, uh, Tarek. Any questions, any comments? And especially on my last uh, question to the working group and chairs. Um, thank you, Kamran. Um, uh, so this is my response, and uh, Lawa and Nick, uh, please feel free to add. Um, it's been a while since we did the last working group last call on this document, uh, Kamran, if uh, I'm not mistaken, and uh, you are flagging considerable changes uh, done. Uh, so um, I'm inclined to agree that reissuing another working group last call uh, makes sense, but if uh, if the were other working group chairs want to comment, um, they're welcome. So I'll, I'll just respond first. Uh, so yes, uh, the working class call happened last September and finished in October. Uh, that was revision five. Revision six is just a respin. There's no change. But revision seven is going to post. We'll address all LDP comments. So it will be uh, uh, it will be a bit of delta. So yes, it will not be smooth. Minor changes are in there. So uh, I, yeah, I I would I would agree with you. And as I said. As an author and co-author, I mean, I uh, I have no issue either way. But I would like to get from the So, Tarek, 
I think there are actually changes in this new draft that is not directly uh, addressing uh, comments from the working group last call. So I think we have a new uh, body of the text that we actually need to look at. And it might be possible to do it as a short working group last call, just one week. Okay. Uh, yeah, so, I think it's the best compromise. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you, Kamran. So, so no other no other questions coming. Uh, Nick, I don't think I have a record of one. Uh, no. So we will move on. Uh, since, uh, Greg is up next. Let me put up the slides for you, Greg. Thank you. Do you see them? Yes. Great. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Okay, um, so what, what's the motivation? Uh, point to multi-point uh, LSPs, uh, or uh, as we discussed today um, earlier in the uh, segment surrounding SRM PLS uh, to stay. Uh, we have uh, two RFCs um, published uh, for BFD for multipoint networks, and um, existing solution um, BFD or for MPLS does not apply to point to multipoint case, as um, the case for uh, SBFD um, does not apply to multipoint LSPs. Next. Next slide, please. Um, you want to skip this? Uh, no, I'll, I'll go uh, quickly. Um, so uh, BFD for multipoint networks uses demand mode, and um, the multiplexing session is different from their uh, asynchronous mode. And thus, um, there are some um, explanation uh, in um, published RFCs so that um, the receiver of BFD control message uses three tuple, which includes my discriminator information, uh, source address, and identity of multipoint tree. Uh, next slide. Um, it, it works pretty simply if we use IP UDP encapsulation, where um, the destination IP address, as in case in 5884, is one of the loopback interfaces for IPv4 or uh, IPv4 mapped uh, range for IPv6. Um, and destination port is of single hop uh, BFD and source is uh, from the dynamic range. Next slide, please. Um, if um, to use uh, non-IP encapsulation, then uh, there is a, a challenge because uh, source IP address is not available in um, existing um, non-IP encapsulation for AC uh, associated channel. So the proposal is uh, to use, uh, and that's a change from the previous version, to use source address TLV that is defined in um, 7212 and uh, allocate a new uh, ACH type for the multipoint BFD. Because if we use the existing type, then uh, the receiver would not expect uh, their source address TLV to follow BFD control message and will not be able to demultiplex. Next slide, please. Uh, the bootstrapping can be done uh, using uh, LSP ping with BFD discriminator. Uh, unlike for the case of point to uh, point, uh, which is uh, defined in uh, RFC 5884, uh, where their um, passive uh, BFD system uh, sends back echo uh, reply with its uh, BFD discriminator allocated. In case of point to multipoint, there is no um, 
any um, use for um, this communication because it does not allocate discriminator. And thus, uh, there is a recommendation to use um, uh, the bootstrapping LSP thing with a do not reply um, setting. So basically uh, that they will receive uh, the, the discriminator and will can start uh, listening to uh, on this um, port um, number and uh, do not um, pollute it. Uh, we do have examples of uh, other control uh, plane extensions uh, to do the bootstrapping. Uh, and as an example, it's in uh, multicast VPN fast uh, failover or uh, PIM SM um, using uh, PIM hello message extension. And next slide, please. Um, so, 8562 is a uh, basic um, BFD over multipoint network specification. It allows uh, their um, egresses or tails uh, to not uh, to discover uh, the state of the multicast tree and detect the failure and uh, possibly uh, act on that um, detection. But uh, there is no mechanism uh, defined in this RFC how the uh, ingress or uh, head can be notified. So this is um, what's being defined in um, RFC 8563, and it outlines uh, three methods. So uh, the head notification and tail solicitation with a multipoint polling, where uh, the poll messages which is a BFD control message with a poll bit set uh, being sent over the um, multicast distribution tree, and then the tails uh, responded uh, over the uh, unicast uh, path um, with a final bit set, and uh, head notification with a composite polling where the um, head combines multipoint polling uh, with their uh, directed um, unicast polling that is sent on disjoint path from the multicast distribution tree. So all these um, two methods are well defined in RFC and documented in RFC 8563. Next slide, please. So that's. Um, just to outline how it operates. Um, so in red, um, so this is a multicast distribution tree and multicast um, poll uh, from their ingress uh, P1, uh, they are uh, transmitted over their distribution tree uh, to um, tails, the ingresses P4, um, 5, and 6, and they in turn send back a uh, unicast final uh, to P1 over their uh, blue line. Next slide. Um, can you hear me, um, uh, Greg? Yes. Uh, I think we're running short and we still have a slot just okay. to give them. Uh, okay, okay, just let's yeah. jump then to the end. Uh, one more. End? Okay, thank you. Yeah, and no, no, no. One, this slide after this. This one? So uh, there is a method uh, mentioned in um, 63 RFC that uh, had notification without polling. And um, it basically um, um, uses uh, capability of the tail to send its notification uh, this event driven. Um, so next slide, please. Yes, I apologize, so we, we're late. Uh, I welcome comments, suggestions, and uh, I think that uh, this is an important uh, piece of uh, OEM for um, MPLS data plane, uh, multicast over um, MPLS, and I ask to consider working group adoption. Thank you, Greg. Uh, uh, we will not take questions. We will move to the next slot, and uh, we will uh, take your request uh, uh, to the list. Um, Thank you, Greg. Um, the last uh, slot uh, we have is for Nagendra. 
uh, your slides are should be up if uh, you can acknowledge you're seeing them and you have the floor. Uh, Nagendra, you're muted. No, uh, I'm here. Can you hear me? Okay, I can hear you. Yeah. I'm waiting for the slides. Sorry, did you say next slide? Uh, I'm not the slide yet. You don't see the slide? No, I'm seeing the great slide. Um, your voice is chopping up. Uh, it's not clearly audible. Um, I'm resharing the slides again. Okay. I have this. I'm having some difficulties. I'm not sure if you're able to see them. Are you able to see the slides now? No, I don't know if it is just me. I'm seeing that it's starting to share the content. I don't see anything, but there, there you go. Okay, there it is. Thank you, Tarek. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Nagendra from uh, Cisco. Uh, I'm presenting this draft on uh, behalf of my- uh, Nagendra, go ahead. Yeah, can you hear me now? I do, yes. Uh, next slide, please. Hey, Tariq, next slide. Yeah, I'm on the problem statement. Yeah, Do you it see it? To be off, it seems to be awfully slow. So um, now, now I see something. <laughs> okay, I'm still seeing uh, the front page. Uh, can I take control? Okay, now I'm seeing the problems. Uh, can I take control and uh, I can present it from here? Yeah, actually, if if you have the if you have the slides, please go ahead and share them. I can barely hear you. Maybe it's an issue on my side. Uh, I don't know. I think it is because I'm hearing it fine. Okay. All right, so uh, the problem statement, um, um, you know, um, over the period of time, uh, you know, we are actually seeing uh, different uh, segment IDs, uh, you know, being proposed for different use cases uh, with uh, different, uh, you know, semantics, forwarding semantics associated. So when we boil this down to, uh, you know, the, the SID verification or the OEM part, um, you know, it requires defining and implementing different types of, uh, you know, um, uh, targeted SEC stack for each of those uh, SIDs. Uh, which uh, introduces quite a few, uh, you know, scalability challenges in terms of, you know, defini the, uh, defining differences and then implementing, then requiring a uh, domain-wide or, uh, you know, uh, node-wide software upgrade. So uh, that's the problem, uh, you know, we are trying to solve. Um, so this is a partial list of some of uh, the uh, uh, segment IDs. Uh, we tried writing, uh, you know, another uh, uh, draft with um, uh, defining the uh, targeted FPC stack for each of those sets. Uh, but uh, it seems like, you know, it's becoming challenging as we have different types of uh, segment IDs evolving. So uh, it's not only uh, about, uh, you know, uh, defining and implementing, but also from uh, uh, the challenges in terms of, uh, you know, how we use it. For example, uh, initiator is now required to collect a lot of information for different types of uh, segment IDs and include that in the um, um, LSP echo request. Um, and on the other side, uh, the responder is required to look into a plethora of data that's received in the uh, echo request processes and, uh, you know, respond it uh, back. So uh, we took one step back to see if there is a, a more generic way, uh, instead of, you know, defining a, a targeted FCC set for each and every set, is there a, a generic way that we could uh, solve it? And that's what, uh, you know, we did it here. Uh, the solution basically defines uh, uh, one generic um, set uh, or a, one generic targeted FCC stack sub PLB, which basically carries the segment ID alone. Um, from the effect probe validations point of view, 
We basically use the responder or the validator will use uh, the incoming segment ID in the targeted FEC stack and uh, perform two types of check. One is, is it the LSP endpoint for that particular um, segment ID and did it receive it from the right incoming interface? So we'll see how uh, in a couple of slides. So this is the format uh, for uh, the uh, targeted FEC stack sub TLB. Uh, it basically, uh, you know, just uh, have a field to carry the uh, segment ID. <coughs> Uh, uh, just a couple of examples about you know uh, the procedure, how we can use this. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, this example explains uh, how this uh, um, you know new targeted FEC stack sub TLB could be used to validate uh, a prefix set, uh, which could be uh, the default algorithm or it could be a flexible algorithm. So uh, in our case, uh, node one is the initiator, which generates the echo request and include the set that needs to be validated, which which will be the same set that will be included in the data plane header. Um, uh, for a moment, let's assume that uh, that's the default uh, you know, algorithm set, which is 16008. So uh, this value will be included in the echo request and the packet will be forwarded. And uh, the node 8, when it receives, it uses this information to check if the LSP endpoint um, is uh, you know, node 8, which is pretty straightforward for uh, prefix set, which basically needs to check if uh, you know, uh, it's the owner of that particular prefix set. And then two, it uh, performs a check about, you know, did it receive uh, it on the right incoming interface? Um, uh, for example, if it is a default set or, uh, you know, flex algo set, it basically will check if it receives uh, uh, the probe on an interface which is associated to the respective, uh, you know, algorithm. This is another example, um, which is uh, for uh, parallel adjacency set. In, uh, in this case, node 7 have a parallel adjacency 9378 which can be load balanced between link one or link two uh, uh, for, uh, you know, adjacency node eight. So uh, again, the procedure is the same. Uh, the uh, uh, initiator, in this case, node one, when it generates the echo request will include the adjacency set, in this case, 9378, and send the probe uh, packet. Node eight, when it receives, it uh, again, you know, performs two checks. Is it the uh, terminator? In this case, uh, yes. And it also will check if it can, uh, if, if it received it on the right interface. Uh, in this case, uh, you know, either on link one or link two. So this is also applicable for uh, the parallel adjacency set where, uh, you know, the LSP is actually load balanced between different endpoints. So uh, in this case, node seven have 9378, which can be load balanced to node eight or node eight. eight. Now, uh, because we're just including, uh, you know, the uh, SID value in the LSP echo request, respective of, uh, you know, I mean, uh, node seven will take uh, any local decision uh, based on, uh, you know, entropy or other uh, forwarding uh, uh, influence. It may uh, forward the traffic to node 8 or 88. In this case, respective of over the node is actually receiving, they can use the information in the um, uh, echo request to perform this validation. Like, you know, am I the uh, LSP endpoint and did I got it from the right interface? Now, uh, through this, I was explaining that, you know, we, uh, uh, in addition to uh, am I the LSP endpoint, we also will perform did I receive it on the right interface? So uh, we included one, uh, uh, you know, method that could be used to perform that check, which is, you know, pretty simple by uh, just maintaining a table. But uh, there might be different other options, which is, you know, completely uh, an implementation choice, but we included one uh, that we are uh, you know, explaining here. Um, any node will maintain a table with um, its locally assigned, uh, you know, prefixes and also the adjacency sets that are uh, assigned by the directly connected neighbors. So the relevant interface will be associated, uh, you know, for each of those prefix. In this case, um, you know, fixing uh, the prefix sets that belongs to both L0 and the algo 128, assuming that all the interfaces are associated to those, uh, you know, algorithms. Uh, node 8 will uh, have the table populated such that it can accept or it can receive the uh, prefix set from any of the interfaces. But on the other hand, it will, it will have the adjacency set designed by node 7 and will have the relevant incoming link associated to those, um, um, you know, adjacency sets. So in a nutshell, uh, you know, the idea is to uh, try using one adjacency uh, uh, targeted adjacency stack sub TLV uh, that could be used to, um, uh, you know, perform the validation for different types of uh, sets. So it drastically reduces uh, uh, the, uh, the amount of information that is required to be uh, you know, collected by the initiator or even inject into the probe packet. And it also reduces the information that needs to be processed by the responder. And uh, because, you know, uh, this is, uh, this is uh, proposed, I said, this more generic in manner, it also could be easily 
extended uh, or easily applied to future SIDs either directly or by some uh, you know simple extensions. From INA point of view, um, they are requesting one new uh, targeted FTC stack for CLV for this uh, um, you know segment routing generic label. Um, we are not proposing any other uh, return codes. We are actually leveraging the existing return codes uh, in uh, 8287 and also from uh, 8029. So there is no new uh, returns of codes or uh, return codes uh, you know, requested by this document. Next up, we welcome uh, comments, suggestions, uh, or even uh, you know contribution. And uh, the authors would like to uh, you know uh, request the chairs to consider uh, board group adoption for this document. Thank you, and again, Drop, yeah, uh, I don't think we have question, uh, rooms for questions to begin with, and I don't think anyone is in, uh, outstanding. Um, uh, so we will assign uh, reviewers from the working group, uh, as usual, to give feedback uh, to the working group, uh, and then we will take uh, an adoption uh, if the working group is interested in progressing this work. Um, okay. I want to apologize to the uh, attendees uh, that we are a couple of minutes late uh, 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 and uh, hopefully that does not collide with other uh, meetings you had. Um, with this, we conclude this interim meeting and thank you for attending. Uh, if anybody wants to say a last word uh, before we adjourn, feel free, it is the time now. Okay. Uh, Thank you, and see you later. Last word. Bye, Greg. <laughs>